Hey guys, welcome to episode 3 of how to program in C++. Today we're going to be going over variables, or just the very start of them anyway. So, I have this set up from last episode, pretty much. The last two episodes, anyway. From now on, I'm not going to be entering everything in from scratch. I'm, most of the time, I'm going to start out with a base like this. So if you need to, pause the video and type this out quickly. Uh, or if you already have it from the last time, then you're ready to go. So let's get started. So I'm going to change Hello World to Apples. And I'm going to put in a colon, and I'm going to type like, uh, say I have six apples. Let's let's compile that and see what happens. So it says apples and then six. Well, what if I want twelve apples? Well, now I have twelve apples by changing that that bit of text. But what if I want to modify apples after the program's started? What if, what if apples needs to change to maybe four? But I, I need control of that outside of the program, or I just want to define how many apples I have somewhere else. Well, you can do that with the power of variables. So, what is a variable? A variable consists of a, a space allocated in the computer's memory uh, for storing data. So it's like getting a box and saying this is for a number, I guess would be a very simple <laughs> example of defining a variable. So let, let's start programming so we can kind of explain this in more practical terms. So the first thing you need when defining a variable is you need to tell the computer what type of variable you want to make, what you want to store in this variable. In this case we want to store a number. So we're gonna use a data type, which is what you use to tell the computer what kind of data you want to store, and the data type is going to be integer. Uh, the way this is written in C++ is int. And uh, Notice that is also down here. Uh, we'll go over why that is down there later on, but just for now, ignore this. Uh, <laughs> the int over there, anyway. So we've told the computer we want to make an integer. Uh, an integer is a number, and it can be a very large number. There is a limit on how big an integer will can how big a number you can fit into an integer, uh, but we won't go over that this time because I don't know the number off by heart. It's a very large and kind of random number. Uh, it does have significance, but it's hard for a human to remember. Um, it's an integer can also be negative so if we want to have negative apples for some reason we can do so uh, so we've typed in int next we need to give the variable an identifier this is basically the name of the variable uh, so you can call the variable anything you want as long as the name consists of only letters digits and there are only a select few symbols you can actually use in a variable name I'd advise you avoid using any symbols except for maybe the underscore. Another rule that is important when write, making thinking up identifiers is it has to start with either a letter or a symbol. You can't start a variable name with a number, it will not work. Because uh, the compiler will think you're trying to deal with uh, uh, values rather than names or identifiers. So in this case we're going to call it apples. Now. Take note, it is important and vital that you take note of the case, uh, because uppercase is uppercase a apples is an entirely different variable from lowercase a apples. So it is very important that you keep your capitals consistent. That comes out as many errors uh, all the time that it causes errors. So semicolon, we have now this whole line just says, computer, I want to make store a number and I want to call it apples. Do that for me and it'll be like okay i'll allocate that bit of space in the computer's memory for that so next line we are gonna well let's go into our main function and uh we'll talk about the significance of where you put this later on know that you could put this in here or you can put it in here just wherever floats your boat for now and we'll talk about the significance later on there is a big significance um so apples let's let's give it a value so type out the name, the identifier, and then space, and then the equals sign, and then whatever value you want to put into apples. In this case, 32. So, at this point, we've given apples a value. It is 32. 
Now we want to output that to the console just so we can check that everything is working okay. So I'll just rewrite this from scratch so you can see. C out, two pointy brackets, apples, colon, and then outside of the parentheses you want to put a another two pointy brackets and then type apples and then hit semicolon. Now, the reason why this works is because this C out will stream all sorts of data in, you can stream all sorts of data into C out and it will output it, be it in garbled characters because you've out tried to stream something in that is not outputable to a console or whatever. It will try and stream it out. Um, so, in this case, well, let's let's see what happens. So I'm also going to add another end line. Oops, end l. And since we're using namespace std, I don't have to type in std colon colon. Let's run it, and it says apples 32. Uh, so our 32 has worked. We can now change this to whatever we want. In this case, 12 works just fine. But what if we want to uh, declare a whole bunch of different fruit on one line. Well, you could go and be like int oranges, int pears, all, all that, or you can just do it all on one line. Now you do that by going oranges, and pears. And as long as it's all gonna be an integer data type or a number without a decimal, uh, you can just declare it all on the one line using commas. So, now that we know that, how about declaring a value, declaring a variable and also giving it a value in one line? Because right now we're kind of declaring apples, let's take away these two for now, we're declaring apples over here, and then we're setting apples over here. What if we could just do both on one line? Well, you can, using the magic of initialization. So, we can just do that. You can just Take out that line that we wrote earlier and write int apples equals 12. And it should work all the same. It does indeed. Now, this is called C-like initialization. Let me write that down because <laughs> you might get the wrong idea. C-like in initialization. Um, there is another way to initialize variables. It is... I have n I never see anyone do this, and it's really weird practice, but I thought I'd tell you for completion's sake anyway. You can declare an integer by using regular brackets after the variable name and typing whatever number you want. So let's say 8. And this will do exactly the same thing that int apples equals 8 would do. Uh, again, this is not a normal thing to do. I don't see people do this at all, but you can do it if you like. It is perfectly acceptable syntax. Uh, just very odd. So, um, that's... I think we're gonna call it there. Uh, I guess we'll do one last quick thing, which is make another variable just to show that you can. So, pair equals... we have three pairs. So, let's make another C out under our first C out. Right pairs and then we'll do we'll stream in the variable pair and I probably shouldn't keep naming consistent so I'm gonna call these both pairs rather than pair and then stream in an end line okay compile and there we go we have eight apples and three pairs exciting um, maybe I'll, I'll okay we'll end it there because I don't want to get too much out in one episode and I really want to talk about more data types next episode rather than going straight in with some adding and subtracting and stuff but we'll, we'll get to that very soon so thanks for watching guys and stick around for the next episode when we will talk about further data types and possibly some basic addition and subtracting and such goodbye <laughs>